Hello, my name is Oleg Puskurnia, and uh, I would like to have this set of lectures in support of my book that I recently published. Um, this set of lectures will assess those who seek uh, new ways in conducting and also uh, to improve his or her conducting techniques. Um, actually, my book talks about uh, recent developments in conducting methodologies which related to um, unrelated um, fields of science which not directly related to music but um, directly and indirectly connected to uh, conductors activity. Why do we need to talk about development or improvement in conducting in general? Well, uh, because mainly generally accepted methodology based on causative and uh, conditional principles which mainly suggest that um, this way of conducting is good because uh, it's only the way it could be done or this way of in conducting is good because such and such individual uh, particularly with a big name um, done that and that was good um, another thing is that lots of um, points in conducting are in evidence uh, there is sort of hidden. Um, we have to understand how inner mechanisms, uh, hidden mechanisms in conducting are working. If we look closer to the general accepted methodology, we can find that main principles in conducting um, are still based on those principles which have been formed over 200 years ago on the age of the 18th and 19th century. As we know, in our days, conducting based on main principle, which we can shortly describe as conducting on the beat or on the strike, um, which definitely has a visual and physical forcible element uh, in it. Uh, but in reality, conducting is nothing but just uh, exchange of the information and uh, if we look at the uh, information itself uh, we can find that in any information there is no um, tension no physics as we can consider or we, we, we understand it at all as soon as there is no physical connection between conductor and players and orchestra Conductor send a message or send information to the orchestra and then got sound in response. In response. Um, but um, because musicians are humans and um, they have to comprehend, analyze those specific information and respond back to conductor, um, there is a certain time lag between conductor's action and musician's action in a back on conductor's action. And to analyze that temporal lag, uh, what we will sp speak a little bit later, <clears throat> we can consider that, that this conducting on a strike or conducting on the beat um, is under a big question. The expectation of the sound at the lowest point of the beat, as um, generally accepted methodology suggested, uh, will not work just because of this uh, phenomena as a temporal lag. Uh, if we look uh, simply on this action, so if we consider that, let's say, this is a beginning of the beat, we go down and then we come up. So we expect sound start at the lowest point of the motion, but in reality, any orchestra or any ensemble 
And it doesn't matter professional or semi-professional or amateur will respond later after this lowest point especially if if this gesture or this motion been made very fast so more likely the sound will start here and uh, such result is not because somebody made it off it's just because of the natures of the human reaction on the gesture if we look in the uh, conducting and ask ourselves what basically what is this what conducting is is that is that um, something similar or the same as a musician who play uh, his or her instruments um, and the answer will be yes it is very similar but it's also very different and for a simple reason because conductor does not have a physical contact with the subject the same way as musician might have and because of this little but very significant difference uh, conducting as a process should be considered um, as something uh, different than other musical activities um, because, uh, simply put, you are not playing, but somebody, and not something, but somebody is playing for you. And it means that everything what you do have to be designed in accordance with a human perception.